Hey YouTube, it's ECP. I know how some of you all just love these bee videos. We're going to check on the swarm hive. Yes, the swarm hive we caught early spring from the neighbor that we gave the new Georgia Queen to. We are going to check it out. We are going to uh, see if they're working on the honey super or not. If not, and they're not building on the foundations, we're going to remove the clean exclu queen excluder to hopefully help them start working on those frames. Spoke with Cayman Reynolds yesterday in his live stream chat as well as my buddy Mike Berry and they both suggested that hey you might want to make sure they start working on those uh, foundations and frames, the new ones and, t and <clears throat> then put the queen excluder on. So we're going to give that a try. We're going to check it out. We're also going to remove the feeder. We're starting to get some goldenrod and ironweed bloom so we're not going to feed here. I don't want to overfeed uh, potentially. So hey, stay tuned. We'll take a look at this hive. Okay, we got our super box on and we've removed the queen excluder in hopes that they will start on this medium super. They filled the both deep boxes up. We've also seen a beetle or two, so we put in a beetle buster trap also. So hey, Stay tuned to ECP for more bee action. Okay, now we're out here at the farm. We left the swarm hive there. As you saw in the swarm hive, we removed the feeder, removed the clean excluder. Uh, hopefully they'll start moving up. Both those boxes, like we mentioned before, were full of the double deeps. We're on the uh, Carney hive. This is my largest beehive. It's uh, two double deeps and two medium supers um, and we're just taking off the inner cover right now and as you can see there's a lot of wing stem behind me and uh, iron weed that's uh, already started blooming and we're starting to get a little bit of a, a flow not much it's just starting to come in so I'm removing the uh, feeders also today and going ahead and put some frames in place those are frame feeders so now I'm going to go ahead and fill the void but uh, I'm going to actually remove the feeder right near right now as you look and see I'm trying to grab a hold of it they're sometimes a little e harder to get out than a um, a frame itself so there's the feeder it's empty got some bees on it we're going to sit it there beside the uh, inner cover as well as beside the uh, cover and now I think we're getting ready to pull a frame just to check a frame real quick the top Super did have honey <coughs> honeycomb on it. I under supered this in previous videos, so the super below this they just started working on barely. So this gives you a little idea where they're working. See some honeycomb there, not quite finished with the frame yet, but they're working hard at it, probably 70% complete. Brought it over so you could see it and so the wife could see it, I'm just checking it out. Uh, no queen excluder was ever put on this box and she never moved up to the super so she's been staying down in the bottom two deeps so that's been pretty good news and wife is getting better and better Mrs. ECP at videoing so it's kind of nice and I'm going to add a couple frames here in a minute to replace that uh, inner feeder so I think I'm walking over there to maybe get that I'm not sure yet yep that's exactly what I'm doing so I checkered these in a little bit, didn't put them right beside one another. And uh, that's what I'm kind of doing now, putting a little bit of B spacing, a little frame spacing in there. So the uh, frames are in there kind of uniform. A little bit meticulous about that. I think the bees appreciate it when they're not too tight or too far apart. And putting both of those frames in there now. So as you see, these are Hoover hives. I've got some uh, Hoover frames in there also. I love their frames. They put a good coating of wax on them uh, so if you want to order any more super super foundations or honey foundations and frames hooverhives.com you can get 10% off there with my ECP 2020 code but I love these hives they are the uh, ones dipped in wax with the true dovetails and I love their boxes love their hives and I love their frames and foundations they come from New Zealand pine and I think it's uh, forget the name of the uh, foundations they use but boy they they put the wax on them makes a big difference bees readily go after them but uh, checking the lower box here now this is the one that I under supered so 
doesn't have as much. I think they're just starting on that, which is nice. That uh, we're just starting to get a little bit of flow. I looked at one or two of the frames, I believe, here in a minute. Looks like that hive's leaning, but it's actually not. It, it might be leaning a touch, but uh, it's not really leaning that much. So you can see a little better. I think my wife kind of leans over or tilts a little bit there herself. But uh, looks like I must have already checked it. She didn't film it, and I'm putting the uh, super box back on. But that uh, super underneath that is the one I'm going to, uh, if I get a good fall flow, that I will take and extract the honey for from my house. And that one I just put back on will go to the bees for the winter time. So there I am. Actually, there I guess got the videos out of order. So I'm checking that frame. That's the second under supered frame, and you can see they're just starting to build some wax on it. No nectar in it yet. They're just starting to build, which is good. And hopefully, with the fall flow, we get some uh, good honey on that lower super box because that's the super box that would be extra and would go to the ECP family. So. Fingers crossed we get a good fall flow and it doesn't rain the whole time. Tell my wife thumbs up. It looks good. Looks like we're moving forward with that one. So we'll see how it goes and keep a close eye on it. And then we're going to put a uh, couple beadrill buster blasters there in too. Um, still using a little bit of vegetable oil. I'm real careful about not spilling it. Uh, probably going to eventually switch over to the dimitaceous earth it seems like everybody's going with that because less chance of spilling the vegetable oil but I do like the fact that I can see it so it's kind of neat but I uh, don't have too many hive beetles I've got one here or there one or two two or three nothing like they do down south nothing like my buddy Mike Berry's got nothing like Cayman Reynolds nothing like those guys dirt rooster and mr. Ed fight down there all the time I know you guys probably watch all those big channels so we're working on the next hive. So this is hive number two for today. I actually have that as a number three hive because I always do the swarm hive and go left or right there. So we did number four. I call that one number three. This one had a queen excluder on it and it's actually where it's a plastic excluder. The box had slid forward about an inch or two. I don't know if that was through the storm or they're kind of slick, but those queen excluders are getting ready to take a hike. So I'm giving a little bit of smoke there through the hole in the inner cover. I think the smoker lined up pretty good there today. It lasted me through all four hive inspections or work I was doing on the hive, primarily just trying to get the feeders out and trying to get the queen excluders out was the biggest goal. And, and we did some inspection. We checked a little bit. Didn't have any problems with robbing. Of course, like I told you, we're starting to get a little bit of bloom right now with some ironweed and some uh, goldenrod starting to work a little bit so fingers crossed it comes in heavy this year so we'll put a little bit of smoke down we'll probably get those bees to go down I think I'm getting ready to take that same another feeder out of there that's exactly right smoke the bees off the feeder too Sometimes they come off, I smoke down the holes, and they all run out of the side of the feeder too, even though it's empty. It seems like they're still down there trying to get some of that goodness, some of that sugar. But uh, I'm gonna set it down here, out in front of the hive, or beside the hive in this case. So we're gonna probably lift this box off. And set it over here to the side. You can see that big gap at least. So we'll put two new frames in place of that feeder we just took off. Then we have the plastic queen excluder. I might start going to metal queen excluders. Uh, my local mentor, he likes the metal ones better. And uh, in the comments, if you think you like the metal ones better and why, let me know. I'd be real curious because <clears throat> I've got all plastic queen excluders that came with my hives that I ordered. And I'm going to check a deep frame while I'm in here bees are pretty calm no one's getting tore up no no robbing going on nope I take that back I'm not checking a frame I'm removing an old deep feeder so that deep feeders out and I'm getting ready to put a frame in place of it so I'm probably getting ready to check her a frame in and I may pull a frame I'm not, I'm not sure yeah I think I'm getting ready to pull a frame here take a look at one so there's a frame we're, we'll pull we can see that's on the end frame 
just starting to build some wax up on that very last frame. So there will be seven frames in there. I run an eight frame hive. I think I'm getting ready to flip it so they'll work on that side a little bit more because I think that back side, yeah, they got about 80% full of, of honey. So that's a resource frame on the end. Take a little bit of that wax off. My buddy Randy always gets on to me and says, hey, that's their ladders. That's what they climb up. Don't scrape those off. But I see that extra wax. It always makes me want to take a little bit off for some reason. So I think I'm getting ready to check a frame a little next frame in. There's some brood. So that she is moving up into that second deep, making a little nice patch of brood. It's pretty solid. Got some honey around that. So I've got a lot of honey in this second deep for winter time, which is good. So uh, I'll double check it before I pull any honey off of them for the fall, make sure they got plenty. But the last two times I've checked, there's quite a bit of honey in both of this hive and the next hive. And there's that deep frame feeder I'm pulling out. We'll smoke the bees off of that. It takes quite a bit, but just getting them to jump down into the box. They seem to like like that smoke a lot. They just run or they drop off or fly off. But smoking them off seems to be a little not get doesn't get them as testy as it does when I brush them off. I've got a bee brush there, but I like smoke. I think dirt rooster likes smoke. But uh, smoked them pretty good, and you'll see their bees are said, "Hey, we're not hanging on this thing anymore." This guy's crazy. So I'm gonna set it. I put a little smoke down in the holes too, and set it there, and all the bees, bees fly back. So we are gonna finally put that deep frame frame in. Checkered it in a little bit, but did not separate the brood, of course. And we're going to work at it. So we're having fun. Hopefully, I really appreciate you guys tuning in, and watching a few bee videos here with me. I know a lot of the people that aren't bee people say that's pretty interesting to them. For the regular bee people, they're probably like, ah, oh, this is commonplace, this is old hat, but I'm um, first year beekeeper, learning a lot, got a good couple good mentors, one online, one here local, and uh, we're now gonna work on the last hive, the bicolor hive. This is the Amish made hive by Busy Bees and more, but that second deep my son made to, for me out of poplar. But I'm pulling that, went off of there. I've already pulled the uh, frame feeder off of it. may have my videos out of order, my clips. There's the queen excluder. So again, we're just getting these queen excluders off of these and the uh, inner inner hive or inner frame feeders out of here, getting the frame feeders out. So I think I smoked these bees off the queen excluder. Doesn't seem like they want to leave much and I think right at the last second I I lay it down and smoke it, then they jump right off down into the hive, which would have been good to start to start out with. And uh, yeah, once I put it down and smoke it, lift it back up, they're all gone. So uh, we're back up here to the top. I think again, I may have the videos out of order. Taking a little bit of a dead bee or two, I think that might have got crushed off of the edges there, tidying up shop, and I think I'm getting ready to pull that feeder out for that. So yeah, I've got my videos out of order there. That doesn't hurt too much. We're still giving you a play-by-play -play with what we're doing here. So this feeder will come out and we'll put, uh, I, might, I might have waited. The videos might be in order. I may have waited and pulled that later. I can't remember. Maybe I did already pull it, who knows? But it doesn't really matter. But yeah, we're getting the inner, the inner frame feeder out. Sitting down here by the inner cover and the lid. I believe we're going to probably put, there's a bee up there on my veil. And I'm going to probably uh, put the other two frames in there. That'll be the six six medium frames I put in, replacing all the medium feeders. Yep, I'm back on the deep box, so definitely, definitely had these out of order. So the videos were out of order, but that's okay. It's the magic of a movie video. So yeah, check this one out. Let's get a look at another frame here and this one looked a little better than it did before uh, looked like they're putting a lot of nectar in looks like they slowed the nectar down because I took away the one-to-one -one. so they're building some comb there for her to be able to come up now it looks like and put some brood nest up there so that's good so we got some honey up there I was overfeeding in my opinion and my mentor's opinion we have plenty of honey plenty of nectar 
in the deeps there, the second deep. And so that the brood patterns are kind of small and they're starting to work on that. But that's probably because like a lot of new keep beekeepers, I was starting to overfeed because we were in a dearth. But now we're coming out of that dearth and I'm not feeding anymore. So we'll see how that goes. But at least they aren't going to go hungry. So yeah, we had the videos out of order. Now we're putting the box back on top, the buy collar box. Busy being more hives there from Galena Farms, the same ones that make the Hoover hives. Hoover hive links will be in here as well as the discount code. So go, go on tonight and check that out. Some phenomenal hives, like I said, dipped in wax, true dovetails, Amish. Uh, they got the Amish made hives, the, the busy being more. They've got the Hoover hives, and both of them from Galena Farms, and they're getting ready to do a new website where they put both of them together, both on web, one website. But right now, just go on there and check out uh, the Hoover hives. Those are my favorite um, of the two. I like the fact I don't have to paint them. They're ready to go. There's wax usually good for about two years, and then you can put another coat of wax on over top of them. So I'm giving it a thumbs up. Tell my wife we're calling it a day. Throwing that down by the truck. You guys take care.